In this video, we're going to talk about how to run for office for the first time. It is easy as one, two, three, if you listen to what I'm going to share with you in this video. There's nothing complicated about it. It's just that when you're doing it for the first time, you do need someone to guide you through it. Stick around because I'm going to tell you how it's done and I'm going to give you a free gift. We're going to talk about where to find the help that you'll need, what you need to know, how to study your jurisdiction, the message that you disseminate to the voters that you want to vote for you, the means you do or use to do that, what we call your advertising, and how you raise the money to pay for it. The very first thing I'm going to talk about is the importance of getting help. It's like learning to ride a bicycle, chances are you had an adult or someone older teaching you how to do that when you did it the first time. And if you didn't, you probably fell off the bike. So listen to me carefully, please. When I say find help, talk to somebody who's run for office before. Talk to a candidate in your jurisdiction who's been through a campaign and perhaps won an election. Talk to them about what they did or what they wish they hadn't done. Allow them to help you to know the culture and the nature of your community. Barring anything else, there are professional political consultants that help candidates who are running for the first time. I have done more campaigns than I can count, including some first-time candidates who were elected to Congress in the U.S. Senate. Now, commonly, after a campaign like that, they'll look at me on election night and they say, oh, Jay, I couldn't have done that without you. And I usually say, why do you say that? And this is the common answer. You helped me do things I didn't know how to do. You kept me focused on what was important and not letting the unimportant get in the way of the important and the urgent. You gave me confidence that I could do what I was trying to do. You helped me express my views in ways that I could not figure out. That's what a political consultant does. When you hire one, make sure their only loyalty is to you in your campaign. And if you got any questions about how to find this kind of help, uh, why well, put it in the comments section of this video and I'll see what I can do. The second thing about running for office, at some point you're going to pick one that you run for. And I'll tell you, when you're running for office, this is what you are doing with voters. You're asking them to give you the power to do something, the power to fix a problem, power to right a wrong or correct an injustice, the power to advance a policy that will affect their lives. They're going to expect you to know exactly what kind of power you are seeking and why, and making sure that the office you are seeking is one that gives you the power to do what you say that you're going to do. And all of this is my way of saying, regardless of what you run for, know the responsibilities of that job, know what you are talking about, and make sure you stay informed about that job in any news during the campaign that affects that job and who holds it and the staff people. Because if you look clueless about what you want to do on a campaign trail or in a door-to-door -door conversation, you're going to have a bad day. I'm also going to mention something about another thing that I just said, which is the importance of staying informed. During the course of the campaign, you will meet a lot of people um, rank and file voters, but also opinion leaders and people who have a lot of influence in your community. And because you're running for office, they're going to be expecting that you are up to date on news. So get in the habit of knowing what happened the day before, before you leave your house in the morning. I don't care what newspapers you read, but you at least ought to know what transpired in your world, in your state, in your community, because inevitably as you are campaigning, people are maybe asking you about that. And if you are clueless, they're going to suspect that you're not at the top of your game. Now, story I'll tell you. I was once a candidate for mayor of New York. I happened to be in the room and I saw this happen. He had, had finally got an appointment with a very wealthy 
potential donor. He sat down with a wealthy potential donor in a, the GM building of, uh, in New York City, and they had their little small talk. And then the potential donor looked at him and said, what did you think about the treaty that the Senate passed yesterday? And he said, what treaty? In other words, he hadn't bothered to read the news. He knew nothing about what the billionaire was talking about. And it took about two minutes for the billionaire to conclude the meeting, having concluded that this candidate for mayor was not qualified for the job. He never got off the ground. He never got a dime. He blew it because he hadn't bothered to read the newspapers that morning. Let's mention your network and the people that you may need to help in your political campaign. And here's the simple truth, nobody ever wins an election without the help of other people. And I'm gonna talk about starting with your own network. You probably already know people who might be willing to volunteer in your campaign, people who might help you advance your cause, people who might introduce you to a lot of their influential friends. They are family, they are friends, they are relatives, they are people who know you and like you that you may have met through the course of your journey through life. The places you're most likely to find people like that, including some people that you forgot you knew is in the contact list on your cell phone. Thumb through it and look for the names of people that you might solicit for help in your campaign. They may be on your LinkedIn account. Go take a look at your LinkedIn connections. Uh, we tend to accumulate a lot of those through the years and some of those people we know very, very well. Take the time to look at your Facebook friends because you may find people there who might be willing to knock on doors on your behalf or give you a campaign contribution, or some people who may have actually been involved in a campaign or know other people who can help you. You have to have a good network of volunteers to start off. And that is the first place and the richest place that you can go to find them. You will need a campaign message when you run for office for the first time. And I'm gonna tell you, and you can answer this however you want to, but your campaign message should answer five different questions that voters will have for you. What makes you qualified for the job? What, what have you done in your life that tells me that you got your feet on the ground? What can you tell me that lets me know that your values and your notions of right and wrong are in sync with mine? Do, do we care about the same thing? What kind of problem are you running to solve? What will you do with the power of this office if you get it? How are you going to improve my quality of life or fix a problem that I've been having with dangerous intersections my children walk through on their way to school? There are a couple of other questions they will have for you here is, what can you tell me that lets me know that I can trust you to do the right thing when I'm not watching? Do you have a story or an experience you can tell me about? Proves to me that you have fidelity to the cause that you're talking about. The final thing is they're going to want to know toward the end of the campaign, hey, I've heard all about you now but what makes you better than the other guy? What makes you better than the other person running for this job? Make it decision easy for me. So why you and not them? If you can do that in a campaign message, you have a great campaign message and one that will carry the day for you. Two other things we have to talk about here because no campaign is complete without them. If you're running in a small jurisdiction where you can win by knocking on doors, then all you need is a little flyer and a handout. And all you got to do is go knock on doors and that's a great way to win an election. But if you live in a jurisdiction much larger than that where you're never going to have time to knock on every door, then you have to give some consideration to your advertising. There are many ways to advertise a message. Social media is a great and easy and inexpensive way to do that. Sometimes you gotta pay to put ads in front of people. That could be digital ads or digital advertising. It could be radio commercials if you live in a community where there are a lot of people who listen to a particular radio station. It's almost universal in some jurisdictions that at election time people are used to receiving what we call persuasion mail. 
is they're making up their minds. There are certain kinds of television that are, may be appropriate in your jurisdiction. They are called OTT, they are called CTV, sometimes cable TV is used. And there's commercial TV, which is appropriate for larger jurisdictions or statewide contests. You can't go through a campaign that costs any money for advertising without knowing exactly what you're going to spend the money on, how you're going to allocate your budget. And finally, you can have a great advertising budget on paper, but if you got no plan to raise the money, it's going to sit there drawing dust. So let's talk about how to raise money. Money is not a dirty word. Money fuels causes. There are many great causes, including what you're fighting for during your campaign. So you can do this several ways. One, the easiest way is for you to call people who are dear friends of yours and ask them to contribute to their cause or to your cause. You can ask friends of yours who may be well connected in the community or may own a business or know lots of people and ask them to raise money on your behalf. There is always direct mail. Candidates still use direct mail. They send a mail piece to voters asking them to contribute. There are cocktail parties, these organized events where someone who knows you invites some people to their house where they give 25 or 50 dollars to munch carrots and have a drink with you. There are more formal things called dinner parties. There are higher end things with well-heeled contributors, but I've seen candidates raise money at a lot of dinner parties. There are things called celebrity events, and I'll explain how this worked because I just attended one last month. I have a client in the Midwest, and he decided to have a fundraising event. And for whatever reason, he knew somebody who had been a world champion wrestler. So he called him. They knew each other. They were friends. He called him and said, would you come out and be the guest of honor at my fundraiser? Now, for whatever reason, when people saw that they were going to get a chance to meet this wrestler at his fundraising event, in two days, he completely sold out. All 300 tickets, they were at capacity. Everybody who went that night got a chance to have their photograph taken with this fellow and get his autograph. That is what we call a celebrity event. If you know a celebrity, ask him to help you. Below this video, you'll see a link to a very special video, and with that video comes a handout. How to write a political campaign speech. You'll find it invaluable as you try and craft your message because we cover some of that material in great detail.